الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستحده ونستغفره وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده والنبي والرسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم my beloved brothers and sisters, first know, alhamdulillah, that although we are living in difficult times, that alhamdulillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is capable, subhanallah, to care for our needs, and we praise Allah, and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. Today we're able to gather in a different way. But alhamdulillah, we are gathering because we say La ilaha illallah, Muhammadan Rasulullah. And Allah has enjoined upon us that we should gather. Gather in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way of His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad. Today I want to say very quickly, Wallahi, I love Allah. And I want to remind you that Allah tells us in the Quran that Allah created us in, the, in different tribes and nations, that we should know each other. Verily, the best among us are the ones who have the most connection, the most obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, Allah made me black. I love being black. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then took my black self and guided me to Islam to join, walhamdulillah, the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu I love it. Walhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be the most diverse community on earth. I love it. Love, it, love, it, love, it, love it. And the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad. Although, Alhamdulillah, there were many prophets who preceded him. I love Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he said in a hadith, in a narration attributed to him, that there is a cure for every disease except death. Right now, we are gripped, not just as Americans, not just as people who live in the developed countries. The whole world is enveloped now in a pandemic. That's why we're sitting in our cars, why we're wearing a mask, why we have to use hand sanitizer. But I'm wanting, I want you to know, there is a bigger pandemic it's a pandemic, we don't like to face it unless we see a video where somebody is killing a black or a brown person. That pandemic disease is called racism. And its manifestation is white supremacy. Now I want you to know, racism is a worse pandemic, it's worse than cancer. It's worse than heart disease. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us Islam as the remedy for racism and white supremacy. Now you might say, Imam, you, you way out of your mind, Imam. What are you talking about? I want to take you back how we got the disease called racism and white supremacy. You see, Allah tells us everything in the Quran, and then if we need detail, we can go to the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in the creation of human beings, and Allah tells us they were created by Allah to be diverse. Some are black, some are white, some are yellow, some are red. All of them were created by Allah. But Adam, alayhi salam, the first man, 
according to the Quran, is gathered among the malaika, the angels, and the jinn. And Allah commands them to submit themselves, to prostrate before Adam. And the Quran said, all did except shaitan. And the principle why he decided he's going to disobey Allah. Because in his arrogance, he said that this is shaitan. So the devil said, I'm better than him. I'm better than him. Why? Because I'm made from fire. He's made from clay. You and I know we made from clay. We don't have a problem with that. On that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded that shaitan, the devil, is going to hell. Because of his disobedience, because he said, I'm better than him. Allah, you don't know what you're talking about. I know I'm better than him. You'll see. This shirk became the birth of racism. Today, we don't look at shirk the way they used to. Like, there's an idol in front of somebody's house, or you, you bow in front of them. For, for us, we're clear. We don't worship stones. We don't worship the cross. We don't worship uh, some, some kind of creature that they make up. That's not, the, for us today, the big shirk. The shirk for many of us today, and we don't have time to have a lecture on different categories of shirk, shirk al-Azgar and shirk al-Akbar and all of that. But today I'm going to tell you, our shirk, the big shirk today, is the shirk of systems. And we're dealing today with a white supremacy system. The white supremacy system says you are better because you're white. And if you're not white, then you're less than human. If you want to understand it, study Maqasid al-Sharia and look at the five necessities outlined in Maqasid al-Sharia and you will see that those people who are victims of white supremacy have had all five of the durura removed from them. Not by individuals, but by a system. And when you see the police department or the military engage in acts of suppression, and I don't care whether it's in Pakistan or whether it's in Iraq or Iran or in Palestine, all of them are designed to oppress people to maintain the order that is against Allah. We call it sometimes a tawghut a system that is designed to oppress people based on the fact that they won't submit to anything except Allah. So they attack, they occupy. Because they say our system is better. You know what I'm talking about. Because they say that if you think that Islam has the solution, that you are some kind of a terrorist. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know today, racism requires that people have power. And those who have power to maintain that system, they execute it and they do it in, with whatever power that they have. And that we as Muslims, alhamdulillah, sometimes we have our own power. We might say out there, oh, those people, look how they profile, how they, they, they discriminate against Muslims at the airport. They're using the white supremacy system against us just because we say, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. But then sometimes we practice our own kind of racism. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preserve us and protect us, alhamdulillah, that within our sphere of influence, that we don't project these same ideas now upon one another. 
أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لكم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على الرسول الكريم Maybe we have challenges trying to figure out how to treat the disease of racism and white supremacy outside, outside of our own families and communities. But alhamdulillah, this is why Islam has the solution. But you can't have the solution for them if you don't take the medicine and treat the disease on yourself. Rasulullah in his khutbah wada in his last message, he is emphatically clear about the issues of concern that he has for his ummah, believing that he will not live until the next Hajj. And among them, alhamdulillah, racism, sexism, and the power of the rich over the poor. You know the Prophet ﷺ in his example. He's saying to us in that khutbah, there's no supremacy, supremacy of one group over another, black over white or white over black, Arab over non-Arab. So you need to ask yourself, and I need to ask myself, then what happened to us? What happened to us as followers of the best example to all of mankind? Rasulullah he fought against shirk. The big one outside and the little one inside. Umar ibn Khattab, he said, Ya Rasulullah, I know you said that there are hypocrites in Medina. Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu an, he said, Ya Rasulullah, am I one of them? He asked, am I, am I one of the, this is Umar ibn Khattab, am I one of the hypocrites? We need to ask ourselves the question. Why we like to point the finger to the system and the police officers and, and the TSA? Let me tell you, when I was a new Muslim, SubhanAllah, I just embraced Islam. I was all on fire. I went to an Islamic center. I'm not going to tell you which one. Went to the Islamic center and I had studied, you know, Hadumatukum Ummatu Wahida. This ummah of yours is one ummah. I'm like, Allahu Akbar, I live with racism all my life. Now I'm in the ummah where it doesn't matter what color you are. And I go after Salat and I see a brother. I don't know where he was from. He, he wasn't from Brooklyn like me. He said, I said, Assalamu Alaikum, brother, right in his face. He looked right in my face and walked away. Now, back then, I was young. I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't do this today. But I was young and I was on fire as a new Muslim. And so I knew my rights, that the right of the believer is that the, the greeting be returned with an equal or better greeting. So I went over to him and I snatched him by his neck. And I grabbed him and I pulled his face next to mine. And I said, Assalamu alaikum, brother. And he looked at me kind of trembling. <laughs> Salam. Said, yeah, man, ne and next time check yourself. Now for some people, that would have been the end. They would have said then, man, I can't breathe in this ummah. I can't breathe. The crash in my heart. Because we're supposed to be practicing brotherhood. I'm telling you now, there's a young Pakistani girl. She wants to marry a young man, but unfortunately, her parents are saying, you can only marry somebody who's a daisy, unless he's white. Or you might be a, a, a young Somali boy. You want to get married, but the family said, we're sorry. You're too dark. They don't say that other word, but you know what I mean. You're too dark. So they send their daughter back to Egypt to make sure she gets away from Abdi. I'm telling you now, I can't breathe. 
But I know, alhamdulillah, as sure as Allah is God, the word of Allah will stand forever. The example of his prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, will be an example for us in this life, or it will be a testimony against us on the day of judgment. If you want to know, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm here at Dalai Hijra. We are diverse. And I'm challenging Dalai Hijra to take three steps and then we'll pray. One, call law enforcement to this masjid as they have come over the years and meet with our community. And let's have some training about what racism looks like, feels like. Second, and I know SAFE and the government affairs, you're on it. Meet with county and state officials, with, with, with the community behind them that says we need to change the color of the police force, EMS, and fire in this community. The people who protect and serve live in our neighborhood. And for us to be committed to help retrain them so that they understand who we are and what we stand for. And the last and the hardest part for you, we need some tough love. We need to have a personal self-assessment. Am I, am I really a Muslim? Do I live by the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Or am I something else? Well, alhamdulillah, before I embraced Islam, I was something else. But by the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Islam can transform us. And if Islam in its power can transform us, it can transform our society and our world. But they can only do it, bismillah, if we are the examples, if we are the Qur'an walking as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so with that, brothers and sisters, I close. I need to give you some instructions because it's a different kind of Jumu'ah. Well, alhamdulillah, we are going to instruct you to get out of your cars to make your ruku' and sujood, but you have to stay next to your car on the driver's side. So, inshallah, why don't we do this? I'm going to ask you to get out of your cars and get onto the driver's side. Place your prayer rugs in position. Walhamdulillah, social distancing. I hear somebody started their car. It's not time to start your car. Well, alhamdulillah, note, note that the Qibla is just slightly to the, to the right. So we won't be straight ahead like this. We're going to be a little bit angled. The other I have to remind you, as much as, well, alhamdulillah, we love the masjid. Because we haven't been to the masjid in a while, Maybe four, five, six, seven, eight Jumas. So don't forget, bi'ithnillah, to donate generously to the masjid on your way out. Um, I used to say to Sheikh Al Hanuti, I said, Sheikh, go and tell them if they donate a dollar, put two. If you usually put two dollars, put five. And if you're going to put five, you might as well put ten. Well, alhamdulillah, there are buckets there. You can put your, your cash. I know some of you will be so excited because you prayed Juma together, you might want to put a credit card. Don't put the credit card. But you can go to the Dollar Hijra website and donate to the masjid without even going, uh, putting anything in the bucket. Just go to the website and donate. And tomorrow night, what time? 7 o'clock online. Dada Hijra will have its first dialogue in this series dealing with how do we deal with racism. Because as I said to you before, I believe, I believe, my opinion, it's a form of shirk. 
Hakim Salah.